I'm going to let you go ahead and introduce yourself and then we'll get going. All right. So I'm Dr. Bruce Christensen. I'm a veterinarian. I, I went to Cornell Veterinary School and uh, graduated in 2002. And then I did a, an internship in small animal medicine and surgery in New Jersey. And then I went out and did specialty training at the University of Florida. I did a residency in theriogenology, which is um, it's like veterinary OBGYN slash andrology. It, it's um, the study of reproduction and fertility for animal species. And I did that for a few years. The, the focus there was on horses and dogs. And after that, I, I became board certified in the American College of Theriogenologists. I took an exam, passed it, and, and I worked in private practice for a short time as an equine theriogenologist. And then I went to Iowa State University for four years and UC Davis for five years as a professor, as a, a professor in their departments of theriogenology. And again, focused on dogs and horses at both institutions. And then about five years ago, I left UC Davis and started my own private practice, which is the Cocopelli Assisted Reproductive Services. And most of our work is with dogs. We still see some horses, but I'd say probably 80% of what we do is canine work now. And it's exclusively reproduction and fertility. That's all we do day mm -hmm. in, day out. So we should start with just what are the sterilization options available for all breeds? Right. So... There are surgical and non-surgical options for sterilization or contraception in dogs. And in the United States, it's pretty much just surgical. There's obviously the traditional spay, which is an ovario hysterectomy, meaning you're taking out both the ovaries and the uterus. Uh, that's the traditional way for females and then for males, the neuter. Uh, that's the traditional, and that's been for years and years and years, for decades, that's been the, the method of sterilization. In, in that school, they, were you taught anything other than those two things? No. Okay. No. So again, I graduated in 2002, and at that time, that is the only option that was taught to us. Mm -hmm. Since that time, there are veterinary schools that have began to teach some of the alternative methods that mm -hmm. we'll talk about. But not every vet school. Most vet schools, I would say, most vet schools still just teach the traditional spay and neuter. So back to the original question of, of the different options, uh, there are some other options and some vet schools are teaching them, but not all. And those other options include either just taking out the uterus or just taking out the ovaries um. or for males, a vasectomy instead of taking out the testicles, just taking out a section of the vas deferens and tying, tying the tubes. Uh, so is the reason that, um, I'm just processing that, so we're gonna talk about why you would retain the ovaries, but would you just take out the uterus because that can be done laparoscop laparoscopically and so it's an easier surgery on the female? You mean just take out the ovaries? I'm, yeah, just take out the ovaries, yes. Yeah, in fact, that was the first alternative way of spaying that came out um, uh, it started to be probably 20 years ago. It might have even been earlier in Europe. Uh, it definitely spread faster in Europe. And it, and in many countries, that's the norm hmm. to do just an ovariectomy, take out the ovaries, leave the uterus. So why would you do that? Uh, you would do that because, yes, it's a smaller... You can do it laparoscopically. So that's a whole other skill level that only very few veterinarians have. Hmm. Um, but even if you don't have that and you're just doing a traditional surgery by making an incision and going into the abdomen with your hands and your instruments, uh, you can also do a much smaller incision and have okay. a much faster surgery. And the bitch has a quicker recovery time because it's a smaller incision to recover from and less tissue is taken out. Okay. So if you're talking about a breed where the retention of those sex steroid hormones are not as important, or at least to our current knowledge, we don't think they are, then that may be the way to go. And so we'll talk about that more, I'm sure, okay. as we go through the, the conversation. So those would be the options. 